Elizabeth I was a long ruling queen of England and Ireland, governing the relative stability and prosperity from November 17th, 1558 until her death on March 24th, 1603. Sometimes referred to as the Virgin Queen, Elizabeth was the last of the five monarchs of the House of Tudor and is commonly recognized as one of the most successful and celebrated queens in history. In fact, the Elizabethan era, the golden age in English history that has been widely romanticized in books, movies, plays, and television is actually named after her. Elizabeth herself remains one of the most recognizable monarchs of British royal history because of these depictions and has become a fixture of modern day pop culture thanks to her appearance and distinctive makeup. Her stark white painted face and bold red wig remain part of her legacy even centuries later. Elizabeth's iconic heavy white makeup wasn't a standard beauty look of the time as many commonly believe. It was actually a form of camouflage, an attempt to cover up her bad skin, which had been left scarred after a near-death illness. But while her makeup, which was made with white lead and vinegar, did offer her a sort of mask, did it slowly poison her over time? Watch on for more on Queen Elizabeth I, her legacy, her incredible vanity, the role her makeup played in her brutally self-disciplined persona, and what role those thick layers of makeup may have played in her death. England's last Tudor monarch, Elizabeth, was born at Greenwich Palace in London, England, on September 7th, 1533. She was the daughter of King Henry and his second wife, Anne Boylan, who was famously beheaded when Elizabeth was just two years old. After Anne's execution, her marriage to Henry was annulled and Elizabeth, who had been born a princess, was declared illegitimate. Despite this, Elizabeth eventually returned to the line of succession and she eventually ascended the throne on November 17th, 1558, following the deaths of her brother Edward and then her older half-sister Mary, also known as Mary Tudor. Elizabeth's reign, which is often referred to as the Elizabethan era, or England's Golden Age was a time of peace and prosperity when the arts had a chance to blossom. Elizabeth understood the importance of art, theatre, music and literature and how they were connected to the legacy of her country. With her support, English poetry, literature, theatre and art flourished, much of which is still read and watched today. For a deeper context, Elizabeth's reign supported the creation of works by such greats as William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe. Elizabeth was passionate about theatre and actively protected it from the Puritans who wanted it banned. The Elizabethan era was also a time when portraiture was a reigning form of painting, and artists of course honoured Elizabeth by painting her portrait. These images reveal that Elizabeth's hair was naturally red, she didn't start wearing wigs until later in life, and that she was an early fashionista in many ways. She loved jewellery and beautiful clothing. She was highly aware of the importance of her appearance in public and went to great pains to achieve elaborate looks that she believed suited her best. Of course, it was also because she was famously vain. Elizabeth was known to order the destruction of any portraits of herself she didn't like. This description of her comes from a journal written by André Hurrell de Mays. He says, when anyone speaks of her beauty, she says she was never beautiful. Nevertheless, she speaks of her beauty as often as she can. Smallpox strikes four years into Queen Elizabeth I's reign on October 10th, 1562, when she was just 29. She was struck down with a violent fever that left her bedridden and forced her to remain in bed at Hampton Court Palace. It soon, be it soon became clear that her illness was more than just a simple fever. She had smallpox, which caused the development of small blisters that would split before drying and forming scabs that left behind unsightly scars. If that is, the patient survived the illness. I mean, that sounds terrifying, to be honest. At the time, smallpox was one of the most feared diseases due to its high illness and mortality rates. 
It was highly contagious and killed approximately 30% of people infected. That would be so scary. With no treatment or cure, Elizabeth refused to believe that she could have contracted such a dreadful disease. The notable German doctor, Dr. Burkhardt, was invited to the queen's sick bed when he diagnosed her with smallpox. She sent him away, accusing him of being incompetent. However, as Elizabeth's health declined further, the doctor was asked to make another visit when he again diagnosed the queen with smallpox. Queen Elizabeth became so ill that she could barely speak. Seven days into her illness, it was feared that she was going to die. And her ministers discussed a succession plan. While the disease wrecked havoc on Europe, killing many monarchs, it did not kill Queen Elizabeth. She ultimately survived, and the succession plan was put on hold. However, Elizabeth did not escape smallpox unharmed. She was left with permanent scars and marks on her face, which left the vain queen super upset despite being able to cover them up. Smallpox not only altered her physical appearance, but would leave her vulnerable to constant criticism and judgment, something she commented on in 1586 while addressing the parliament. Queen Elizabeth said, We princes, I tell you, are set on stages in the sight and view of all the world to dully observed. The eyes of many behold our actions. A spot is soon spied on in our garments, a blemish noted quickly in our doings. Elizabeth didn't really wear makeup, but after her battle with smallpox, she began using makeup to try and cover her scars, ultimately creating an iconic look that we know today. During the Elizabethan era, the upper class considered pale skin incredibly beautiful, and a popular makeup available in the 16th century was known as Venetian Ceruse, also known as the Spirits of Saturn. This was a highly sought after skin whitener made with vinegar and white lead sourced from Venice that gave women an incredibly pale look. Elizabeth began obsessively using this Venetian ceruse in an attempt to cover her small spock scars. The lead in the makeup, however, was poisonous, and over time, a Venetian ceruse caused hair loss and skin fading, two things Elizabeth suffered from as she got older. Archaeologists have found traces of white lead in the graves of upper-class women who lived as far back as ancient Greece and in China, the ancient Shang dynasty. But Venetian ceruse wasn't the only deadly makeup that Elizabeth used in her beauty routine. After her battle with smallpox, she also became known for her vibrant red lips. The bright red color on her lips and rouge on her cheeks came from cinnabar, a toxic mineral containing mercury. Today we know that mercury poisoning can cause memory loss, depression, or in extreme cases, death. The biggest problem with Elizabeth's use of Venetian ceruse and cinnabar was how long she left them on. For weeks at a time, with daily top chops layering the poisonous makeup onto her skin over and over again, leaving plenty of time for the lead to soak in her skin. Now, that's so gross that she never washed her face and she just kept layering it. Then, when it eventually came time to remove the thick layers of makeup, Elizabeth used a mixture of eggshells, alum, and even more mercury. This would only worsen the effects of makeup that was slowly killing Elizabeth. Unfortunately for her, when Elizabeth began losing her hair, she began wearing wigs that were dyed red with even more mercury. Elizabeth's beauty was said to have faded badly with time, but applying makeup with mercury to her face on a daily basis, Elizabeth began to experience skin deterioration and hair loss, which she battled by applying even more makeup because she was so self-conscious about her image. She imagined that people who are much influenced by externals would be diverted by the glitter of her jewels from noticing the decay of her personal attractions. By the end of her life, Elizabeth was in a state of deep depression because of her deteriorating appearance, and she refused to have a mirror in any of her rooms. Along with her poor physical health, she showed signs of declining cognitive ability and delirium. Despite this, she refused to rest and reportedly stood for hours, which historians believe was because she was so afraid that if she were to sit down, she would never get up again. Elizabeth died on March 24th, 1603, at Richmond Palace in Surrey at the age of 69. I mean, for back then, that's pretty old. Like, that's decent. That's a decent life for back then. People did not live that long. After a successful reign for 45 years, at the time of her death, she was reported to have a full inch of white makeup on her face. 
By this point, she had lost most of her teeth, suffered hair loss, and refused to be attended to and bathed. She was considered a pathetic spectacle, all the more so because throughout her reign, she had been so vain to the point of being childish. Elizabeth's embalmed body was guarded in the White Wall Palace for three weeks before being laid to rest in a lavish funeral ceremony on April 28, 1603. Today, her tomb can be found in Westminster Abbey in London, England, in the same vault as her half-sister Mary I. The Latin inscription at the base of her tomb reads, Partners in throne and grave, here we sleep Elizabeth and Mary, sisters in hope of resurrection. Because Elizabeth had no children, with her death came the end of the House of Tudor, a royal family that had ruled England since the 1400s. The son of her cousin and formal rival, Mary Queen of Scots, succeeded her on the throne as James I. Elizabeth's life story is one filled with drama and vanity, and she has inspired countless artistic and cultural works throughout the centuries. She's undoubtedly the most often portrayed British monarch in films, portrayed on the screen by a wide range of actors including Catherine Hepburn, Betty Davis, Judi Dench, Kate Blanchett, Helen Mirren and even Margot Robbie. No historic figure has been represented more honestly in the cinema or better served by her players. She's a character worthy of our fascination, a virgin queen who brought almost half a century of stability after the turmoil of her sibling's short reigns. But one can't deny that one of the biggest reasons we remain fascinated by her is because of her appearance, her flame red hair, white face, and lavish ensembles. The exact cause of Elizabeth's death remains a mystery because before her death, she refused to grant permission for a post-mortem to be conducted. However, today it is generally believed that she may have died of mercury blood poisoning, brought on especially by her decades of long use of lead-based Venetian ceruse, which was finally classified as a poison 31 years after her death. Ultimately, it is impossible to say for certain what killed Elizabeth I. Regardless of whether or not her makeup killed her, what it has certainly done is helped ensure that she remains one of the most iconic monarchs ever lived. And let me know in the comments below, like, do you think her makeup killed her? I mean, it kind of seems like it if you had an inch thick of white makeup. And let me know in the comments below if you have any other video requests. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.